So now we are moving on to buttons. And this is going to bring us to another feature of SAS, which is mix-ins. We're going to be trying to be as clever as possible uh, to save us uh, the greatest amount of time in the future using mix-ins, which are essentially like functions. But let's start by just styling out the buttons that we're going to place in here. And as always, we'll write the markup first. So just under this paragraph, I'm going to create a single button. So it's just going to be an anchor. And this is going to have a class of button. And in here, we're going to have some text. So we could just say something like learn more, for example. So we've now got that uh, link in there. We want to transform this into a nice looking button that has an effect when we hover over it. And we are going to do this by creating a new component, which is going to be called buttons.scss. So inside of buttons, then we have our main button selector, which we've already applied to our element. And we're going to just basically change some styling around here. So we're going to display buttons as an inline block. We're going to give buttons a padding. So I'm going to say eight pixels on the top and bottom and 14 on the left and right. You can obviously adjust these values. We're going to set text decoration to none. We don't want the underline uh, effect just there. So that's done the following once we add it to app.scss. So let's just add that in now and refresh. So that's done that. So it doesn't look great at the moment. But what we're going to do, let's just close off some of these, is we are going to set a border radius here. And this is going to be a variable. So we are going to define this in here. And again, you feel free to add more variables for each for uh, many more properties. It's entirely up to you. So I'm going to call this button border radius and we'll set this to say five pixels. So inside of buttons now we can say button border radius and for now, what we're going to do is we're going to set a standard background color. And this is just going to be a button background color. So button BG color. We haven't actually created this yet. So let's go ahead and create it now under variables. Just duplicate this down and we'll just say button BG color. And we are going to give the standard button BG color as the value from another variable. So this is another thing that you might want to do is define, say, um, different standard widely used colors for your application. So let's just say colors. And we're going to set a primary color, which of course we could use to set things like uh, the container footer color if we wanted to. It's entirely up to you what you do with this. And for this, I'm going to say E0, E0, E0. What I'm also going to do now, uh, just prematurely to actually building the buttons, I'm going to set a success color, an error color as well. So a success color is going to be a green color. And for this, I'm going to choose 5EBC41. So you can obviously look up any color palettes, any colors that inspire you. And we're going to have an error color as well, which is going to be a red, which is BB2828. And what we can do now then is say for, for the button BG color, we'll set that to the primary color. So when we change the primary color, if we've changed the primary color uh, or, or use the primary color for any other components, uh, our design is going to be updated to reflect these standard colors. So entirely up to you what you do. You could have a secondary color if you wanted as well. Um, but generally, this just makes it a lot easier to update the whole design. So now what we can do then is under buttons, uh, we'll just save that out and we'll go and refresh. And you see we get our uh, primary color there. We get that uh, gray color in the background. Now we're actually, actually going to be changing this um, to include a mix in a bit later. And all that's going to do is when we hover over it, it's going to uh, start with an opacity of say 0.8. And when you hover over, the opacity is going to go to one. And we're going to use a mix in to achieve that. So we can reuse that mix in uh, anywhere else in our design. But first, let's tackle the problem of uh, different size buttons. So this is only a really rough example. And I'm defining these down here. So let's just duplicate this and we'll say button 
medium. So we now have two button elements. One is going to be a medium size, one is going to be a standard size. So for the button medium, we have a padding of 10 pixels, 16 pixels. We have a font size increased to 1M and we have a font weight of 500. So that gives us the following. So we can always go ahead and just change uh, these around. In fact, let's give a font weight of 500 to all of our buttons just to make these look a little bit uh, more even. So if this is slightly larger. You can you can fiddle around this if uh, with this if you want to. It's entirely up to you. And let's while we're at it, define a large button as well. So we're going to set the padding even higher on this. So 12 pixels and 18 pixels. We have a font size of 1.1m. And it, well, we don't need to define the font weight there because we've already done it up here. And then we get an even bigger button when we actually define the markup. So we have a button large, like so. So we've got three different size buttons now, but what about different colored buttons? So we're gonna sort of come off of our success and error colors, and we're gonna say button success. We're going to set the background color here to the success color. And for our button error, so a sort of error style button, we're gonna set the background color to error color. And while we're at it, we'll say color button error text color. And we'll do a similar thing for the success as well. Uh, so we'll say success text color. So we have these two variables here that we want to include. So we'll say button success text color will set to white. And we'll do the same for the error color as well. So uh, if we just apply these classes, so we could say button medium success and button medium error or button large error, sorry. We now see the different colors here. So these are easy hooks that we can use uh, to build in. You could of course build a mix in to deal with the increase in padding if you wanted to. There's many things that we can do here, but we're gonna focus on creating a mix in that originally sets this background color of the button to a slightly less uh, lower opacity value. And when we hover over it, it's going to increase that opacity value. Of course, what we could do is we could say something like hover, and then we could change the background color here. But why waste writing all that markup when we can create a reusable function uh, within SAS? And these are referred to as mix-ins. So I'm going to create a new file under base where we keep our placeholders and variables, and I'm going to call this mixins.scss. And in here, then we define all of, all of our mixins, and I'm going to be defining a mixin called hover background. Not a really amazing name, but uh, we can sort of deal with it for now. And this works, like I said, exactly like a function. So we define that it is a mixin. We give it a name. We have a list of arguments that we can pass through to it. So we can have multiple arguments here. And inside of here, we can set properties. You might be thinking, well, why is this different from a placeholder? Obviously, the first difference is that we can pass in a value and we can use that value within our mixin. So for example, what I could do now is I could say, well, I want the background color to be RGBA. So this is uh, SAS's RGBA function, passing in color 0.8. So all we're doing here is we're saying when we call this uh, function or mix in and we pass in a color, we're automatically setting a background color property, reducing the opacity to 0.8. And you might be thinking, well, why is this useful? We'll see in a minute why this is useful. But let's first apply this mix in to our uh, buttons where, we, where we've included a background color here, here, and also here. So to include a mix in, we use the include statement like this. And we just give the name of the mix in and we pass in the color. And because we know the color is button BG color, we can pass that variable directly 
into that mix-in. And we're going to be doing the same thing here, down here. So we pass in the success color instead. Get rid of that. And we want to do the same thing for the error. And we want to pass in the error color like that. Now, if you're a bit lost and you're thinking, well, why am I doing this? Why have I just um, created a mix in or a function to reduce the opacity when we could have just done that? Well, this is all about the hovering of the element and it makes it easier to define this and reuse it across our application if we wanted the same effect anywhere else. Uh, we obviously have an error here because uh, I've not imported the mix ins. So let's do that now. And let's just refresh here. So these are a slightly um, darker color, if you like, a rather darker, sort of less opacity color. But we can see that they're not as vivid as they were before. But when we hover, we want them to become as vivid. And you might be thinking, well, why is this useful? Why? What's the point in doing this? Well, it just means that we don't have to declare these properties again and again and again. And it also provides a really nice way to then hook in things like transitions and we'll be doing that in just a moment as well. So for this um, mix in then, we want to say when we hover over any element that's included this, we want to change the background color back to the original color that it was. So we're just reusing this or recreating this functionality for everything based on the color that we pass in. And by doing that, we then have this effect here. You can see that uh, the opacity changes to one when we hover over, hover over them. So anywhere else in your application where you think, oh, I want that button or link color to, to change or something like that, you can use a mix in that deals with that. So now let's look at transitioning and we'll be looking at using transitions on our navigation as well. And this is a perfect opportunity to reuse the mix in we're about to create. We'll do that when we create our navigation. So I'm going to create a new mix in up here. And this is a mix in that's going to be able to be used anywhere for sure on your site. So we're going to have transition. Now for a transition, we need to know which element we're transitioning on. We need to know the speed and we need to know the effect that we're using. So we're going to pass in the property here. We're going to pass in the speed and we're going to pass in the effect. Now, the point of this is if, for example, you require vendor prefixes for any CSS properties that you're using, you can define them all in here so you don't have to repeat them. You just call transition and we can just output all of the vendor prefix properties in here. So I'm going to go ahead and say transition on a particular property for a particular length of time and with a certain effect. Speed, I guess, should be sort of length of time, but we'll leave it at speed for now. So if you had, say, a WebKit vendor prefix for this, which is not required at the time of recording anymore, but uh, that's sort of besides the point, you can just include them in here. And by ha having this transition mix in, we can then say inside of here, well, we want to include the transition we want this to be on the background color. We want it to last for 100 milliseconds and we want to have an ease in effect on this. So now we see that when we hover over these, you can see that they are transitioning between 0.8 and 1 uh, of their opacity. So there we are. That is pretty much all our buttons done. We've looked at using mix-ins here to achieve our hover background effect really easily by just going ahead and passing in the color that we want and that's just does it all for us it keeps this file nice and clean we've looked at some very basics like creating medium and large size buttons which you can obviously tweak and make better and we've also looked at creating another transition uh, the reason that we created this transition and then we've used this transition inside of another mix-in or use this mix-in inside an, another mix-in. We will be using this mix-in later on its own so we won't be including this in another mix-in and we'll be using that for the navigation which we are going to go on to and create next. There is however one quick thing I think we should update here and that is inside of our buttons file that we've been working in. 
uh, you can see here that we're chaining on these selectors and that's fine if you want this to look uh, a little bit more readable down the page uh, that's absolutely fine however what we can do is we can do the same thing we did with our hover pseudo element so for example here but we can do this with selectors as well so even though we're chaining these on and they're not nested uh, within CSS what we can do is we can take this we can uh, use an ampersand and we can just paste this in here let's just indent that and we can do that for each one of these so let's grab this paste this in here and let's change this to an ampersand and we can do the same for these two as well so let's grab these two here paste them in like so and just go indent them and go ahead and add an ampersand just here so it's entirely up to you this I guess looks a little bit neater because you are nesting it and you know that these are attached so we do that in exactly the same way as we do with hovering so now you can see we have exactly the same styles but we have something that looks potentially a little bit tidier so let's head on over now and build that navigation